Good afternoon, and welcome to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Jeremy Ricci, and I'm here today with Larry Steinhouse. Phil is down in Siesta Key, Florida, a place where we would want to be right now. And uh, we have a special guest here in the studio today, Tom Ferris. Tom Ferris is here. We're going to talk a little bit about mortgages. And also, we're here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday at 3 o'clock, every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. If you want to ask us questions or have any real estate needs, give us a call. 267-988-2000, 267-988-2000. So who is addicted to real estate? We are the real deal. We are full-time real estate investors. We buy houses, and you can contact us if you have one or if you're looking for one to sell. We also have a real estate agency specializing in clients who want to invest in real estate. We have three offices in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley. We also have investor-friendly and uh, investor-friendly realtors, and we have education meetings every month. If you were there last night, you know how great a session it was. For more information on the next session, you can check us out at addictedtorealestate.com. That's addicted, the number two, realestate.com. So how's everybody doing today? Pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing really well, Larry. It was, um, you know, last weekend I got over that little bit of a cold, but, you know, everything's better. It's um, it's nice to see the weather's finally breaking, a little bit warmer now. Yeah, I know. And the rain uh, the last couple of days was a little rough, but it seems to be getting better now. Yeah. So what are we going to be talking about today, Jeremy? Well, as always, we have questions. Questions are emailed in this week. You can send the questions directly to Phil if you'd like. Phil at addictedtorealestate.com. And the first question is, is if, is this a good economy to buy real estate? So we'll talk about that. That's another one of my favorite questions. Everyone asks me that every single day, it seems like. Is there ever a bad time to buy real estate? Well, we don't answer the question yet. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> Another question is, I have about 30000 saved for a house, and my wife and I want to buy. I tell her we should use it for real estate investing, and she says we should use it for the house we're going to live in. What's the best option for us? Okay. Oh, I love those questions. We'll those fun, yeah. And the other person said, I saw a property that rents for $1,200 a month, and the seller wants 150000 Zillow says it's worth more than that. Should I buy it? It's like landing on a Monopoly, you know. Not believe it's space. Should I buy it or not? <laughs> yeah, and then, and then and are we going to go into the whole discussion about Zillow and we have to be careful about those prices on Zillow? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and then uh, it, later on in the show, we're going to talk about the main topic, which is how to get a mortgage for rental and commercial properties. And we have Tom Ferris in the studio with us as a special guest with uh, First Choice Loan Services. So we'll be talking about that. I'm, you know, Phil's not here. He's down in, in Florida right now. I think he's catching up on some Phillies games with his pop. That's pretty awesome. You know, it's yeah. a life of a real estate investor. I just love to be able to do stuff like that. It's great stuff. Well, we just had a big renovation down there, so he wanted to check the progress of the renovation. I know he put some pictures up on Facebook. Uh, another vehicle wrapped this week. Larry's got wrapped last week. This week, Phil's got wrapped. So we're, he got his little roller ski BMW wrapped. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, and if you want to know if the life of a real estate investor is really good, just drive by any one of our offices. You'll see brand new trucks with signs that say, I buy houses, and, and all BMWs. I'm jealous, Larry. You know, I... I, I uh, my truck's a 2012, and now I got like the oldest one in the fleet. So I got I got to think about upgrading. Yeah, I made Jeremy drive my truck here today because I wanted to get a new one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Although that thing beeps at you left and right, I, you know. Oh, it's yeah. It, we, you you know, got, it's you got, got a lot of new technology. CarPlay. It's pretty exciting. You know, the best thing is going from a car that costs you money to one that makes you money. When you have advertising on your vehicle and you get phone calls on that, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so, and, it, and it, they're so loud. You can always find your truck too. Yeah, right, with all the all the advertising. So, yeah, I, I tell people we're trying to keep it a secret, right? So, all right, guys, tune in. We'll come back with the questions of the week, and we'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. 
and I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number 2.com. Hi, I'm Larry Steiners, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. Today we're going to talk about questions, this segment, questions that were emailed into us. And uh, if you have any questions, you can send them to phil at addictedtorealestate.com or questions at addictedtorealestate.com. And either way, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get them on the show here. So first question, is this a good economy to buy real estate? <laughs> so, Jeremy, I, I tell you, it's hysterical. Every time I meet somebody new... And, and I tell them what I do, you know, invest in real estate or a real estate agent or whatever it is I, I, I say. They say the same – they ask the same question. Is this a good time to buy real estate? Is it a good time to buy real estate? And it's really funny. You know, and, and Tom actually said it just a little while ago. He goes, is it ever a bad time to buy real estate? And the answer is it is never a bad time to buy real estate. But right now is an incredible time to buy real estate. You know, I, you know so, some people who know me know that I, I really like to follow the stock market. And I'm a chartist, what they call a chartist. So I follow charts in the stock market. And my favorite charts that I buy in the stock market right now, the the, uh, the charts that I buy in the stock market, w- when I buy it low, I see the same chart in the prices of real estate right now, which what I see clearly from the chart is that real estate is not only going to skyrocket over the next five years, but this is the last best year to buy real estate. Now, I'm telling you the good years are coming. But this is the last best year to buy, which means that you can still buy real estate inexpensively and get good mortgages. And not only will the prices go up next year, but they're going to go up over and over and over again over the next five to seven years. Now, I understand there's another thing that ha- that plays into this, and that's your locale, where you are. You know? Oh, sure. I mean, sure. I was when I was out in Colorado for the ski trip, it was booming out there, and people were bidding up properties left and right. They were, um, you know... A place was on the market. It's funny, the, the agents out there, they put signs, coming soon, you know, not for sale yet. Well, there's a sign in the yard. Obviously, it's for sale. So, <laughs> But they get the, these bidding wars, and they were doing some interesting things like pricing them at 85% of their value just so that they would get bidding competitions. That's a great idea. So, it, yeah. as, a, as a real estate agent, I talk to clients about doing that, and, and no one wants to do it. No one trusts me to do it. But yeah. it's really funny, because but it does work. Well, you know, Larry, you're you're our broker in the office. If somebody lists a property for sale at a set price, do they have to accept that if somebody offers it? The answer is no, they do not. Which is which a lot of people don't understand mm-hmm. that you could you know you could list a two hundred thousand dollar property at one hundred fifty thousand. If somebody offers you full price, that does not mean you have to accept that price. Yeah, we're we're expecting multiple offers. Yeah, right. I, exactly. Put in your yeah. highest and best. Right. And if you recall, about a couple of weeks ago, I put eleven offers in 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 one week. I put it was and and. Some of them were over asking price on the MLS, and I didn't get those properties. So that's how crazy the market is right now. 
What are you seeing, Tom? Are you seeing stuff in the mortgage world? Well, what I'm seeing is, as far as the market's going, is now would be a time to underprice the market for multiple bids. The inventory out there is not strong. We have a lot more buyers in the market than we have sellers. So if you're sitting on a property and you're thinking about selling, don't miss the boat. Now is the time. So you're saying it's a seller's market. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And now, it's a seller's market. Now, and the is, sellers and buyers don't know it yet. That's the best time to be a seller's market. So this is funny because Tom, Tom deals with Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac stuff with, on the mortgage side of it. And I'm, I'm really out of touch with the retail side of the business because we're, we're really in the wholesale markets. Sure, sure. And even in the top of the market, when things were peak, 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 we were still getting really good deals in real estate mostly because we're buying properties that aren't for sale. So the, the less people know about the properties, um, the less competition there is. So obviously, if you want to get the most exposure for your property, you know, you call Larry or you call Phil and you, you list it on the market. Sure. But some people don't want to list it on the market. They don't want to go through the hassles of that. So they, they may come to us directly and say, I'd like to buy my house. I want you to buy it as is. And we get some really good deals even in the top of the market. And that's, um, you know, that's how it's always a good economy for us because we're doing a lot of – a lot of marketing, a lot of advertising, and people come to us and say, can you help me? And we find out ways we can help them. So, But the retail market is totally different. The retail market, you know, the inventory, like you said, is kind of drying up right now. I have buyers who anywhere from the 160 to 315 price range telling me there's nothing out there they want to buy. Yeah. I have guys looking for five, six months even. So maybe we should start putting some places on the market in that price range. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy the house that I bought yesterday for 75000 for 300000 You think that'll work, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> All day long. <laughs> But just because it's a, a seller's market right now in the Philadelphia area doesn't mean you can't buy good deals is what I'm trying to advocate. And a lot of deals that I do with owner financing, you you know, if you're if you're structuring a deal, a creative acquisition technique with owner financing, you're taking over somebody's mortgage, a lot of times you can pay full boat retail as long as the terms are good. And speaking of terms are good, I mean, interest rates are really low oh, right incredible. now. Yeah. So, so the, the dollar, the figure, the, the, uh, the amount of somebody's paycheck, that goes towards their mortgage, they can afford a much larger house or much more higher of a mortgage payment because of sure. interest rates being so low. Absolutely. FHAs are in the threes. Conventional are in the low fours. Investor rates are in low mid fours. Yes. I mean, come yeah. on. That's... If you can borrow money at, at less than the price of inflation, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're making arbitrage on inflation. That's It's phenomenal. And that's what, when people go to pay down their pay down their loans early or to get like shorter-term mortgages, like 15-year mortgages, I just don't get it. You're, you're, you have the ability to borrow money at less than inflation. You should borrow that money for 40 years, 100 years, as long as <laughs> let your grandkids pay it back, you know. <laughs> so, all right, guys, so let's talk about the second question here. This, uh, this is somebody who, who emailed in saying they have $30,000 saved for a house, and his wife wants him to, to put that down towards their primary residence, and uh, he wants to buy an investment property. What's the best option? Here's the best option. Yes. Right. Listen to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Right? <laughs> but as far as as far as as far as <laughs> the option of buying a house, um, actually, you know, this is interesting. So you probably, and I don't know what price range you are. You haven't given us enough, enough information. But if you are buying a house in the one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollar range, and you have this thirty thousand, my suggestion is go with an FHA loan. Put as little down, even if you are paying the PMI, and Tom's going to chime in as any second, I'm sure, and save the rest of your money for a real estate investment property. In fact, the order in which you should buy it is you should buy your primary with the almost nothing down using FHA using FHA loan, and then save that the rest of it to buy a to, to buy an investment property. So t- tell us about what I'm talking about, Tom, because well, you know this you know, inside I, out. I'll, I'll go one step further before we get into the actual mortgage. Is if you don't have kids and you guys are newly married. Buy the duplex first. Live in it. Yeah, that's right. Do an FHA on the duplex. You're talking 3.5% down. You're into a rental property already. Great idea, yes. Even if you're there six months, you have plenty of money to then buy a single-family home, which you already have half the duplex rented out, which will count towards your DTI. And you're in great shape to buy the single home, and that's the best use for that $30,000. You have two properties now. DTI is your debt to income ratio, yes, which is something that's you know in the mortgage industry that's a little three letter acronym TLA three letter yeah. acronym. <laughs> that, that, yeah, uh, debt to income ratio is important, but that that that's the way I would say it. I would definitely go you, duplex first. You can get better rates if you're living in the property. Absolutely. So, so one option right, exactly, is to right. live in the one that you plan on being an investment. You can live in it 
get get the loan, live there for a little while, and then buy a new primary residence and rent out the old and one. And then rent out the old one. And then you get the better interest rates on the next house as well. That's absolutely true. And if you're living in a duplex and it's your primary when you start, we have no problem believing that you're going to now live in a single house as your primary. A lot of investors try to buy multiple primaries on the sly, but this is the way to do it correctly is you bought the duplex first. Well, if you're if you're moving in intentionally, intentionally right, and, and you're really moving in, right. I mean, yeah. obviously we don't advocate people saying they're going to move in and not. We well, I'm saying that was a problem right. in the past. People used to We're onto it yeah. now, so that's being tracked within the system of Fannie sure. Mae and Freddie Mac. But that does make sense if you're in a duplex, and then even a year down the line, you're into your single family home. It makes sense. You started with a duplex as your starter, and now you're ready for the real thing, and you got the single family qualifying. <laughs> now, the other thing I would say is is try to stretch out that thirty thousand as much as you can. I mean, maybe you can get into a deal where you do no money down. If you listen to us, if you ha- hang out with our, you know, come to our meetings, you'll learn how to buy houses without your own money. And if you could buy houses without your own money, you can buy both your primary residence and the investment property and another investment property and still have the $30,000. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? I love that. It's That's so the best of all worlds. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah you, you can do that. You have to learn, you know, some creative acquisition strategies, and we and we teach that. So co- check us out at addictedtorealestate.com, addicted, the number two, realestate.com. And find out when our next meeting is and, and come learn some of these strategies. And you can buy ho- your own house with no money down. You could buy an investment property with no money down. I mean, surely if you have money, it helps. But there's always there's other ways to do it as well. Absolutely. So let's um, let's get into the next question. I saw a property that rents for $1,200 a month, and the seller wants 150000 Zillow says it's worth more than that. Should I buy it? Well, I hate it when we don't have enough information. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one thing that one thing that Zillow does does doesn't show you. It may show you comps, but it doesn't show you the interior photos of the property, so you can see the condition of the place, the description of the property, so you can see does it say handyman special or does it say fully renovated. So I think the only place to get that information is to do legitimate comps on the MLS. Um, if you need help with that, obviously we have agents in the office that can help you do that. But that's really the only place to, to truly determine a house's value. But there is some other things in this in this question that that make it that would make me actually not want this property. Um, you know, and I think what's happening here is I think the, the question is being asked about speculation. Zillow says it's worth more than that. Should I buy it? So that means that he thinks he's buying it for 150, and it's probably worth maybe I don't know 170, 180. Let's even let's even 200. You know, if Zillow says that, but he's also playing the speculation market, which is a really bad market to play. Because if I look at the rents on this, uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the one percent rule, and the first thing I see is if the property is 150 and the rent's 1200. You're probably not going to cash flow on this property, which means it's probably going to cost you a couple hundred bucks a month. Depends on the taxes and the insurance. Exactly. And whether it's in a – at the 150 price range, my guess is it could be in a homeowner's association. Or maybe not. Maybe it's in the city of Philadelphia yeah. at 150 – you know, gets you Possibly, a, yeah. a nice row home somewhere in northeast Philly or something. Yeah, like that. but even with that, you know, if you again, but just wait going to one percent, it probably won't cash flow. Now, it doesn't mean that it won't. It probably won't. You know, depending on your loan, depending on many, many different things. But the, the, the so so if this is a speculation move. I'm not a big fan of speculation moves. You know, to me, you know, you could probably find a property that'll cash flow better and also let you use. You, you know, let you gain equity and let you, and if there is growth in the property, it'd be great. And then again, you know, Zillow, you know, we, we, we've kind of had this discussion before. Zillow doesn't always give you the right number. Sometimes they may give you a higher number, and sometimes they may give you a lower number. So it's difficult because Zillow has some interesting algorithm that yeah, they uses. use an algorithm, but, but not only that, but a lot of times the algorithm bases, uh, bases the calculation on public records. And we know that public records aren't always right. I mean, I had a, a two bedroom, one and a half bath that I bought that turned out to be a three bedroom, two and a half bath. So if it's price, if, if it's pricing it based on what it gets off of public records, you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? So you, you never know. Right. And to an investor, the, the 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 price of the home is it is not the same as it is for someone who is buying the home to live in. Someone buying the home to live in may want to pay more. Someone yeah. who's buying the home, it's, a, it's investor. A different. They're making a decision based on their personal use, personal preferences, not based on cash flow. But in this case, it says it rents, so it's it's, it's going by rents. So I'm assuming right. this is an yeah, investment exactly. property. Sure, sure. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the, other, the other factor, too, is uh, you were saying about speculation, but I think with real estate, it's one of the things that you can buy equity at a discount going into it, unlike stocks, where you can't say, hey, the stock market, the stock's selling for uh, $100. I found somebody that's willing to sell it to me for 80 
You know, right. the right. market sure. is what the market is. But with real estate, you can always find situations where somebody, you know, it's real estate is very illiquid. It's, it's tough to sell. Right. It so it takes a while to sell. It's not it's not a uh, you know sell it today type deal unless you come to us. But uh, <laughs> but <laughs> how can how can they reach you, Jeremy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to Addicted Real Estate Town. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, seriously. If 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 you're if you're wanting to uh, buy an investment property and you can get it under market value. I mean, definitely it's a good deal, but you also want to make sure that the tenants can afford the mortgage payment because you want to make the thing positively cash flow. Right. All properties cash flow. It's whether it's negative or positive. Well said. Well said. <laughs> yeah, and of course, you know, if anybody out there is, is interested in buying a property for for uh, you know, for an investment property, please give me a call, 215-378-9190. I'll be more than happy to go over your deal. Even if you're working with another agent, you know, I'll be more than happy to work go over your other deal, obviously, you know. Uh, this is what we do. We do this all day long. We do this every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and we will make your, we we will make sure that you buy the right property. And I will say too that dealing with a real estate agency that specializes in investors. I mean, that's what we we are investors. Our agency specializes in investment property. We know how to analyze deals. We have a broker, Larry, that's savvy on on investments. So it's definitely a good. A uh, good opportunity if you're looking at investment property to deal with addicted real estate because we, we are investors for investors, by investors. And we have investor-friendly loan officers like Tom. Investor-friendly title companies. Yeah. Half of my business is done through investors. That's awesome. That's great. Very cool. And we're going to be getting back to that a little bit more right after the break. We're going to be talking to Tom and finding out all about mortgages and how we get mortgages and how to become more mortgageable. I'm pretty excited about that. I want to become more mortgageable because this is difficult. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, it's not that hard. All right, so stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7600. 701. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7700.
Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And our main topic for the day is how to get mortgage for rental and commercial properties. And to help us with that is our special guest, Tom Ferris from First Choice Loan Services. Tom was ranked number one, I'm sorry, top 1% of loan officers in the whole country by Mortgage Executive Magazine, which is the trade publication for the mortgage industry. That's a that's a pretty phenomenal uh, rating there. One, top 1% based on production. So yeah, that was Congratulations nice. on that, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. That was... Uh so you do a lot of loans, so it means you're stressed out, right? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Mortgage lending. Uh, you know, a lot of people come to me and they think that, uh, you know, we're just out to get you. In fact, uh, I saw some political event where uh, someone was talking Hillary Clinton and uh, swore that he was beat up because he was Spanish. And uh, you're not a person when you come to us. We look at your numbers. Your numbers tell the story. <laughs> you're just a number. No. I mean, your numbers really do tell the story, though. A lot of people don't realize is. What we're really looking at is we're looking at your taxes, obviously, your pay stubs, your bank statements, and your credit. And it's we've gone to such a common sense underwriting practice that, you know, people remember the 90s, and I'm sure you guys remember the 90s and the 2000s when if you were breathing and got a paycheck, you got a mortgage. Well, you know, that's pretty much all gone to the wayside. Now we're just looking at basic, can you afford the property? Does the property cash flow? If it's currently rented, that helps as well. Um, Your taxes on your current rental properties, are you taking too big of a loss? A lot of investors like to say that, hey, you know, I'm writing down so much that uh, I get a bigger check back from the government. But when they come to me with those write-offs on their tax returns, I have to take it against their income, and that could knock them out of the box for a new investor loan. There's a lot of planning involved. There in is a lot of planning. Sure. How to structure your income. Sure. Structure. That's the biggest mistake investors make who currently own investment properties is they tend to write off a little too much, and it takes their income down to a point that could hurt them for a new mortgage. It's a tough balance. I, you know, I know. You know, you and I have spoken before about you know about me wanting to refinance some of my properties, and it's it's very difficult because I have to take the balance between you know how much do I pay the government versus how much am I going to make on the property. Yeah, and uh, you know what? It is a balance, and uh, obviously none of us likes to give the government anything more than they deserve, yeah. deserve which, which, is. which is less than <laughs> they get, you know, less than I want to give them. But um, Go flat tax. Oh, wait, <laughs> wrong show. <laughs> but Taxing consumption better than taxing fruits of someone's labor? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that too. But really, when it comes down to your tax return, um, I would say Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, basically they only allow you to do 10 mortgages. And there is an advantage to doing a, a Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgage when you're starting out as an investor. Obviously, you get the best rates, the best conditions, and you start your real estate career on a, on a note that's stable somewhat. When you're at that 11th property, you're out of the Fannie world anyway, and these guys don't use me. I mean, these guys have some great ways to buy homes that are beyond what well, I, I can do, too. That's true, but we're paying 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I was 13, 14, get into that. 15% interest rates on some of our properties. Now you're getting, now you're getting offensive there. I don't know <laughs> well, I was going to get into that, too. I was going to get into that, too. It's, it's more of a little more of an advanced type of lending, but if you're going to get your feet wet going with a Fannie Freddie Mac loan, it is a good way to go because, it, it, first of all, you get the knowledge You get the fixed rate luxury of having a mortgage just like you would on your home for 30 years. You know what the mortgage rate is going to be. It's not going to change. Uh, You're not going to have a balloon. I don't know if any of you guys deal with balloon notes where you have to pay the – you know, your lenders off in 10 years. It depends. You know, it does depend on how you structure something. The problem with balloons is balloons pop. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I have a question for you though, Tom. Go. So so let's say it's a new new investor listening to the show and they really want to they want to go buy, I don't know, let's say an average uh, we'll almost use the example that was in the question. $150,000 property, okay. $1200 rent. How would they what would they need to do? Would they ha- how much money would they have to put down on a $150,000 well, property? If it's a single family home, 15% Oh, on a, on, a, on a commercial? I mean, on, I'm sorry. On, on, a, on, a, on a rental, rental yes. Really? You can do a 15% so down down. So it's 85% loan to value. Yeah, you can do an 85% right. loan to value. It used to be 75, price. right? It actually used to be 70. 70. Yeah. 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 You can do a 15% down, and, uh, uh, you know, there is PMI on that loan, which is private mortgage insurance, which is an insurance policy you have to pay because you're not putting 20% down, and it covers the bank for some of the losses if you happen to fall into foreclosure. So is the um, PMI more expensive on a, on a rental property than it is? It is because oh, yeah, okay. there's more risk. Sure, I'll bet. Risk yeah. equals you know, sure. payment, obviously. Um, now, if it was a duplex, we're still sitting at 25% down. 
duplex. No, unless you live in it, right? If unless you live in it. Oh, if you live in it, you can put 5% down or we can do it FHA. There we go. You know, yeah, to answer the $30,000 question right? yeah. that we were talking about earlier, they can do an FHA loan on that all day long, move into the duplex, six months later, pick up and buy a house. But uh, uh, for the, again, the 150, they're very little on facts. We don't know if that's a single family or a duplex. But, right, right, right. But, but if it was a single right, family, using that as an example, though, yeah. sure. Yeah, there's even some out there that are the zero down, like if they for primary residence anyway, right? Aren't there uh, USDA and VA well, and things like that? Or? Well, the VA loan is probably the strongest loan out there. Obviously, they don't do investment properties, but it's 100% financing, and the seller can pay all closing costs. That's phenomenal. You can't get a better deal than there's the no veterans cap? get. There's no, there's no 6% cap on no, the No, not on the VA loan. Absolutely not. Yeah, obviously, you had to qualify for a VA, so you have, right, to, sure. you have to risk well, your life first, and then you can get a good loan. Well, that's a good, well, that's good yeah. VA qualification, though, I mean, at a 660 credit score, 640 credit score, you still get the best rates. Yeah. It's not like a conventional loan where you want to be in your 700s to get the best rates, so the VA is still a fantastic program. What about if somebody buys a property, they go in cash, all cash, or they get a private investor, a hard money lender? Mm-hmm. Let's say one of the issues that I had with dealing with banks was that just the time frame it takes to, if I have a deal and I need to close <laughs> the deal quickly... I'm, I'm typically going to a private investor. Sure, sure. But then I want to get better rates, so it would seem the best thing to do would be to refinance it. And I have done mm-hmm. that. I've never used a bank to buy a house, but I definitely have refinanced sure. or got lines of credit and things like that using um, traditional institutional lending. Well, so it, what's how long is uh, – the rules I'm sure have changed, but how long is it today? I mean, now we're, we're in uh, March 2016. All right. Well, if you are going to go off of the loan-to-value of the purchase price, you can do it right away. Okay. okay, so if you purchase a property for, say, 100000 you got your private lender to you lend buy it on Friday, money. and you can refinance yeah. it on Monday? Correct, correct. But our loan-to-value, if it's a single-family home, obviously our loan-to-value will be based on um, purchase, the, the purchase the, the price purchase or the appraised price. value, whichever is less. No, or whichever is less, correct. Yeah, right. Now, if you're going to do a cash-out refinance, which say you put your own cash in, um, and you bought a property, say, for 80000 you know it's worth 150. And you want that appraised value mortgage, you got to wait six months. Is it six months? Okay. Six months. You got to wait six months. And they call months. that seasoning, right? That's right. seasoning, yeah. a six month seasoning, and then we can go and do a cash out. Six months isn't bad. I remember just a little while ago, it was one year seasoning. It was one year seasoning, yeah. So that's so. not bad. You're talking about seasoning. I'm ready for lunch now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or dinner. <laughs> we just had lunch. It's three o'clock, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know. <laughs> It's a, it's a growing corporation. You got to feed it. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 exactly. So, okay, so so let's say so again, new investor. Maybe they own their own their own house. Um, you know, maybe they have some equity in their house. We a lot of times we we, we encourage our investors to take equity out of their house to, to get a loan on that house and then put that as a down payment money on the next house. Is that something they can do? That is something they can do, and that's something I did on my first investment property. I own six myself, so my first investment property, I took a HELOC on my primary. And use that as a down payment. I, I flipped that property, paid back my home equity loan, did it again. That's great. And then, you know, started buying some keepers as well. No, so I want to make sure everybody heard that, that we actually have a real estate loan officer, mortgage loan officer, that also has investment property. So do they? does Tom understand investors? Of course he does. I am an investor myself, and yeah. I also own some properties in LLC as well. So I do know both sides of it. Sure. So, yeah, so, okay, so so when they take the HELOC, now, do they have to qualify also to be able to make that payment as well? Of course. Okay, so so the, is it two separate stages, or is it all done together with you? Well, if you're going if, if we're going to sit down and obviously qualify them, we're going to do it as all as one. We're going to say, okay, so your main mortgage is this. Your HELOC would be this. Now we're going to qualify you for how much investment property you can buy carrying those payments. That's where you want to start. You know, don't put the cart before the horse and say, I have this property. Now I'm going to go get the HELOC to buy it right? because you might blow yourself out for that property. So, of course, you want to sit with a mortgage person. when you're Even if you're considering investing and you're not committed yet, sit down with a realtor or a mortgage person and discuss all the things you need to know. And one of them is how much can you afford to buy on your current income and how you're going to come out with the down payment money. And if it's through a HELOC, we got to consider that into the debt-to-income ratio. And what about people who are, who are going to go in partnerships, you know, where one has a job, one doesn't have a job, one has the down payment, one has the, the, the W-2 income. How can they buy a property together? All right. That's a little more tricky of a question. If you're going to go into a partnership in a situation like that, here's the uh, pitfall to that. 
the person who has the money who's not going to go on the mortgage, and if they're not going on the mortgage, that money doesn't help us for the investment property because right. you're not allowed gift money. So my best advice to two people who are going to buy a property is they got to have a joint bank account. Let's get that money into the joint bank account. Let's establish that that bank account is going to be for the investment properties, and then that money now is able to come into our um, situation where the one borrower is going to be the borrower, and the other borrower is going to write a letter basically saying he has use of the funds in our joint bank account, and that problem has been solved. So this so, is all just advanced planning that you need it to really do. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It really so is. Get your ducks in order before you start making making offers sure. on properties. And how far should they be? Should, two months, three months? We'd want it in there for two months. Okay, great. It's awesome. not so bad. Yeah, and then the, but the property can't be titled in both their names, right? Sure it can. Oh, it can be, but Absolutely. the mortgage can be in one. Mortgage can be in one. Both oh, of them, great. you could title in five different well, names. Well, actually, the mortgage has to be – now, there's two things. There's a promissory note, and right. then there's a mortgage. The, the collateral instrument is the mortgage. The promissory note is the promise to pay. The mortgage – the only person that can convey a mortgage is all the owners of record. So. Correct. But then the, the note, note itself is just on one person. So people, that's kind of a misnomer. People say get a mortgage. What they mean is get a get a loan that's secured by a mortgage. Correct. But everybody in the industry just says get a mortgage. Which really, if you think about it, you give a mortgage to the lender. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm you, just being technical. Only you would get that. Only again. you would get that technical. Yeah, not I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just, yeah I'm but actually, it was a smart. It was a smart right, time though. to bring it up. Because, yeah, he's absolutely right. Yeah, because it's exactly right. What will happen is the when the W two income has signs the promissory note. They're the one who's who's really liable. But the mortgage is on the property, and both the people who own the property are, are pledging mortgage, that mortgage. Correct. That I had this issue, when I was uh, trying to refinance a place that I owned in trust, they were they were debating on whether or not, well, geez, the, the owner of the property is some trustee, and you're the one signing the promissory note. There's two different parties. And I, and I say, well, it shouldn't make a difference as long as you're comfortable with the collateral and you're comfortable with the credit of the person and the income of the person repaying it, you know, you think the two would be mutually exclusive. Like, you know, if my neighbor was so kind that he wanted to put up his house as collateral for a loan that I was going to take out. <laughs> yeah, neighbor, it's a little different, though. <laughs> my, neighbor's not that, my neighbor's not that nice, but no, I'm but, but actually, I have that, nice neighbors. That brings me to a really good question, Tom. What about LLCs and trusts? If we own properties in LLCs and trusts, how difficult is it for us to get a mortgage? Or, or refinance, for example. Okay. Trusts, as long as they're irrevocable trusts. They can stay within the Revocable or irrevocable? Irrevocable trust. Okay. They can stay within the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac world. I think there's also revocable guidelines, too, under cert, with certain provisions. But I'm not, I'll have to look. But I, I don't, yeah, I, yeah. Because we use The trust use has to be able to be changed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's revocable. No, that's yeah, revocable. That's, I'm that's sorry. Revocable. 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 You're yeah, right. Yeah, that's I'm, why I thought. My that's fault. why I asked, actually. Yeah, yeah okay, revocable. Good. My fault. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was getting all nervous. That's the kind that we use. No, no, that's my fault because I did send you guys the trust guidelines. Right. But the LLC, that is commercial. Okay. That is one thing Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will not touch is the LLC. But you can get people loans, commercial loans for that, correct? Of course It's just can. not at the lower, lower right. interest rate. It's not at the lower right. interest rate. Right. And First Trust Bank, the arm of my lending group, which is First Trust Loan Services, has a setup for all that. Right. And not but even still, rates. the rates are yeah. a lot lower than, than, than hard, hard, hard money, money and private money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So even if you do have an LLC, it's not that you can't get a loan. It's just a little bit higher, but the rates are still below inflationary rates. Well, my commercial, well, my commercial loan, I think I'm at five and a quarter. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's, that's you know, phenomenal. Wow. Still phenomenal. No, it's an adjustable rate, but I, I think I'm at five and a quarter. I don't have one loan that's under 8%. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, when you borrow from humans and not institutions, you have that's to. That's right. You know, yeah, everybody's happy. I'm you making know, I, money. But I find that the more somebody's in the real estate business, uh, it would be interesting about putting maybe like a fund together to do uh, – you can start generally soliciting now the, the, um, the Securities Exchange Commission in 2014 changed the guidelines. So it's pretty interesting to see how they changed the guidelines. So you can actually generally solicit for funds. So we should think about putting a fund together at some point to um, to raise uh, raise private money on a larger scale. Now, you can only there's, – there's guidelines. You can only do it with accredited investors. They have to have a – Net worth of more than a million dollars, or you can't touch it, you know that kind of thing. But um, but yeah, we need to get those those rates down. And whether you do it through institutional loans or you do it through raising money privately, uh, definitely helps your cash flow to have lower interest rates. Yeah, and either way, I I think I have to talk to Tom after the show and try to get some 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 of these refinanced into more conventional ways. And there's always new programs coming out. I mean, how often do you see changes in your industry? Tom? Actually, <laughs> how often do I see changes? They're they're constantly changing and. We have some exciting programs that are coming out shortly that I can't speak about yet, but uh, that's awesome. Um, good for yeah, investors. Yeah, very good for investors. Uh, awesome. Some time. We'll give you three seconds to give your phone number. Hurry up. Two one five nine eight three eight six four nine.
Thanks, Tom. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steiners, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7600. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. Hey, I'm, you know, we're going to bring you into one of my favorite topics is how to find properties to invest in. And I love this topic because it's so much fun and it's so diversified. I mean, you see people with all kinds of different ways to do it. I mean, everything from banded signs to website stuff. But we're going to tell you some of the stuff that we do and some of the stuff that absolutely works. Jeremy, go for it. I can see you're, you're chomping at the bit. You can't wait to talk. Go for it. Well, I'll say there's, there's two types of marketing that I, I like to categorize. And one of them is shotgun marketing, which is kind of a broad Stroke marketing the example of that is the like the the bandit signs that people put out, uh, maybe uh, the trucks like we have driving around where people see the truck. They're not necessarily targeted at any one person, but people see them. They don't know the service exists. They they see you know general advertising, find the service that exists, and then and then call us. So it's not like people look in the yellow pages and say, you know, where's the we buy houses company? Mostly they're going to look in the yellow pages or whatever and. It, are they, is that still around, Yellow Page? <laughs> I, I don't know. But, but, you know, I wonder but, could, or, but even yeah. Google for that for that matter. I mean, most sure. people are looking to list it on the market with a real estate agent, which is fine. But there's other people that don't want to do that, and they don't know that our service exists to just buy their home. So that the, the shotgun advertising works well for that. And a lot of times what you find is people that um, you're kind of operating in a vacuum because nobody else knows that they're, they, they're potentially going to sell their property. The other type of marketing – is more sniper, like targeted marketing, where we're uh, sending out marketing for a particular targeted audience. So let's say uh, out-of-state owners or what I call retiring landlords or you know maybe people that have unfortunate circumstances like a divorce or a foreclosure or something like that coming up, and we can target specifically and then match the message to that targeted market. So those are the two types of, of marketing that we do, um, the, the targeted marketing, I guess, I think you can talk a little bit more specifically about of what you're doing too, Larry. 
Yeah, some of the things I do with target marketing, first of all, you know, I scour the MLS. I love the MLS. It's a great place to be. And, and, and honestly, you know, we've talked about this before. If you want to be a real estate investor, it's a strong suggestion to get your real estate license. And you heard the commercial. I'll get you. Your, I'll, I will pay for your real estate license. Um, you know, real quick, call me, 215-378-9190, and I'll tell you about how to do that. But I scour the MLS. I look up to see certain developments I want to, I want to invest in. And, you know, it may be a development with, let's say, 400 homes. And, you know, a lot of people who get into marketing, they don't understand that you have to send multiple pieces of marketing. You know, there are th- – I think it was Abe Lincoln who said a while back, you know, you know, first they, uh, first they ignore you, then they resist you, then they join you. So typically when I send out a marketing piece, the first thing that's going to happen, I'm telling you right now what's going to happen is you will be ignored. No one will even respond, um, and, and that's it. It's over. And then a lot of times people think, oh, well, nobody, nobody responded to my, my letter. Why should I send another one? Well, I absolutely suggest you send another one and a third. It's the impressions, right? You have five impressions, seven impressions. Sure. Keep getting those sure. impressions in order, to, and then a lot of times people will get marketing from me that it's, it's their sixth or seventh time, and they say, well, "Geez, thanks for sending this to me. It's the first one I've gotten." Right, and they they don't remember the other ones because <laughs> it wasn't relevant to them at the time. Right? But what happens first, Jeremy? First, the first one gets ignored. The next one, they fight you. So the next no, they one, call you get, say, they take call, me off your list. Take me off your list. How <laughs> dare you put me? In? And a lot of people fall here. They get so scared, like, oh no, I upset five hundred people by sending five. No, you upset one person. Yeah, right, right, and in right. fact, what I do now is I cheer when I get those letters because I know what's coming next. Right. What's coming next is they're going to join me. They're going to call me up. So I, I get really excited over, over those letters. So I send a lot of letters. I send postcards, and they do work. But you have to understand if you're going to if you take a certain amount of money away from marketing, you know whether. And I teach this in my real estate agent classes too. When I teach real estate agents how to market for listings, I teach them almost exactly the same thing. They have to have enough money to be able to uh, to be able to mail the same people multiple times. And you really should be looking at five to eight times in the same market. So don't send out a thousand letters if you only have enough money to buy a thousand letters. You know, send out two. 200 letters, then you can mail five those times. same people five times. Exactly, exactly. So that's a that's a big plus. Um, we also websites. You know, a lot of people have websites. You know, lead capture websites. In fact, I think you've heard us before. We have a lead capture website that we created called Easy Out Real Estate. And if you want to go there and take a look at what we do, you go to easyoutrealestate.com slash addicted, and you'll see one of the live websites, which is actually the one that's being used for addicted to real estate. And if you want, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can actually buy this website for $50 setup charge and $50 a month. It's the greatest value for a lead capture website ever. I mean, I can go into the whole thing with it, with it but you can see it on there when you, when you see it. So having those, I, I get those leads coming in from me as well. And a nice thing about the, the website, uh, lead capture website that you put together is they literally can fill out a form, hit submit, and the moment they hit submit, the website is up and running and ready to go. It has text in there. It has the lead capture mechanism in there. So when you're sending out letters or postcards or what have you, you reference your website. Somebody goes to the website for more information. They put in their information, and now you have somebody that raised their hand and said, I need help. I want, I want to sell my house. Correct. And, of course, That's it's fully phenomenal. customizable as well. So you can change the banner. You can change the colors. You can change the text. It's great. When you take a look at it, you'll, you'll, you'll be really impressed. And if you, want to take, if, you want to, if you want to find out more about it, obviously you can call me also, 215 378 Nine one nine zero. So, some, what are some of the other things that you're doing, Jeremy? I, I like direct mail as well. I know that you're big on direct mail. Direct mail. We've done uh, postcards. I, I know you mail your postcards and letters right from the office. You have somebody. That's right. You have some, you have print them out at the office. Uh, you have card stock already. You print them out and you mail them directly from the office. I do it from a little bit different approaches. I send them to a mailhouse as a mail merge, and then just have the mailhouse send them out through postcard postcards. Um, Although the the letters that I've done, I, I do uh, printed out letters, but I hand address. I have somebody hand address all the envelopes because the first thing you want to do, the first thing with the, with mail is you need to get it opened. Now, a postcard, right. you don't have that problem, but with, with a letter in an envelope, hand addressing it with a live stamp. Don't try to save a few pennies and get this uh, bulk rate stuff. It, I, to me, it just doesn't work. Get a live stamp. And I even put it on a little crooked. So sticking on a little cricket. I've heard so. that works. Yeah. I, I've heard that. Yeah, I've yeah, heard sure, that. Sure. Yeah, I've heard that sure. works. Before they had the forever stamps, when they had, what was it, 33 cent stamps or whatever, I mean, a while ago. Um, and they upped the rates to, I think, 34 cents. I would. I had all these 33 cent stamps that I bought, and I added that one cent stamp. So I had two stamps on it, and I got a better response rate just by simply having two wow, stamps. That's interesting. Wow. To the point that when I ran out of the 33 cent stamps, 
I ended up putting a 34 cent plus an extra cent that I didn't even need. Like I already, 34 cents covered the postage. It's worth the penny if they're opening it. The extra Absolutely. penny got sure. more open, sure. so I just sure. added a penny. I paid one more penny. You know, I was trying to keep the post office in business, you know. <laughs> no, but I, I did get more response. Having the handwritten letters is great. And making your marketing look different. I, I remember I was just looking to get uh, somebody's forwarding address. So at one point in time, I put, you mark on, on the letter, do not forward uh, address correction requested. As oh, long as you, yeah, you put a first class stamp on there or whatever. Yeah. And by putting that on there, it was a stamp that I had. I just got it, you know, got a, went to the office supply store and got a stamp that I, I put on it. And um, and I didn't, I just had a piece of letterhead, and I didn't write anything on the letterhead. In fact, I ripped it in half, and I folded, I folded into thirds, and I put that in the envelope. Well, the letterhead had my phone number on it, but there's absolutely no message on it. And somehow the person got it. It didn't get returned back to me. The person got it, and there was no message, and they called me <laughs> and said, wow. I got this empty letter. What's this about? So, wow. you know, if people are worried about writing the copy. I didn't write any copy in that case. No. I don't know if that's a strategy. I wouldn't suggest that. But but in one case, it, it did work. So That's cool. I've, I've done everything. I actually had, um, before we had the real estate agency, I actually ran an ad in the Yellow Pages. But one of the things that I like to, to advocate people do is track their marketing and find out what's working sure. and what's not working. I had a mentor in the business that said 50% of your marketing works they just don't know which 50%. <laughs> so the way you do that is you have different phone numbers. You have ad tracking phone numbers or you have extensions. Mm -hmm. I like to use free recorded messages. So somebody calls an 800 number, they dial a free recorded message. For instance, on our retail location on 309, I have somebody dial extension 309. If it's, uh, let's say, an ad on Craigslist, I might have them dial extension 209. Well, they're the same exact recording, but by putting a different extension, I have a, a phone service that can that can mirror these extensions, it allows me to know whether or not I'm getting a good de good deal. The uh, the Yellow Page guy, I put an extension 109. Well, a year goes by, I spent $1,000 for a Yellow Page ad. The Yellow Page salesman comes back into the office and he says, it's time to renew. And I said, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to. Let me check. And he said, what do you mean, let me check? I said, well, let me look at the stats. So I, I log into my phone system and see, I got seven calls in not an working. entire year from that Yellow Page ad. I'm surprised you got that many. And he says, and he said, that, he said, you know, he said, well, it wasn't the right ad. And I said, I don't know. Let me check. And I and I had the same exact ad in the window at a retail store, just with a different extension. And on that, I had 170 calls. Wow. So I showed him. I said, look, I got 170 on the same exact message, wow. different extension. Yeah. And he he didn't say anything. He actually says, "Okay, thank you," and he walked out the door. Okay. I mean, what could he there, say? There wasn't anything to say. The funny thing was, I got a call just not even six months ago. Now, that Yellow Page ad was from 2006, maybe, 2005. Somebody called me on that ad just six months ago. People don't I only ran it that one year. They didn't throw it away. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. So that's, you know, that's – I like the marketing tracking mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that with, um, you know, you can do that with the tracking 800 numbers. Uh, even clicks, like let's say you're doing a Facebook ad or you're doing an ad on Craigslist. You can sign up for some of these web shortener services. Bitly is one that I use. And I, I make the link, a Bitly link, and it'll tell you how many people clicked on one Bitly link versus another Bitly link. And all that Bitly does is it takes a long URL, a long website, and it shortens it. And you can point multiple links to the same website. And you can see, like, let's say I send out an email to somebody, and in my signature of my email, I have a link to our, our I Buy Houses website. I make a Bitly link so that... It's kind of an encrypted link that um, when somebody clicks on it, I can track how many people clicked on that link. From over, that letter. From yeah, yeah. my signature line. Right. Or let's say I posted something. I don't do this all the time. I try to do it as much as I can. But let's say I post something on Facebook. Instead of posting my website directly, I could post how many. I could post one of these special links and see um, see how many you know that's, how many people clicked on that. That's a great way to track it. That's so that's awesome. another online version of marketing tracking. It's important to track your marketing to know where you're spending your dollars and if you're getting an effective return on your money for that for those marketing dollars. Yeah, I know when I when I took the picture of my my uh, truck when I got the truck and I posted it on Facebook and I said look at my new truck and of course it's it's an advertisement. Sure. Because it has the phone number it has I buy houses it's pretty obvious. I don't need to say anything more about it and I I got something like 58 likes and all the kinds of great comments and I didn't realize how great of a how great of a marketing campaign that was. Oh, just just posting, you know, 
you, you almost have to post videos and pictures. You can't just post text anymore. You, you need to sure. stand out on Facebook. So I, I posted a picture of like an ugly looking shed with graffiti oh, on I it. Oh, I remember that. It was great. Yeah, and people gave responses. I said, hey, you got an ugly house in your neighborhood, hopefully with more square footage than this. Yeah, you that, know? Was, that was a great one. I and I gave responses. Yeah, I, I've got, taken yellow letters. On that or something, I've taken a yellow pad and just handwritten with a Sharpie. I'm interested in buying a house. And, uh, a fixer upper house. Does anybody know of one? And I put my name and my phone number on the yellow on the yellow pad piece of paper, and then took a picture of that and posted it. What was the point of doing that versus typing it? It stood out. It looked different. You have to look at what everybody else is doing and say, how can I stand out from the rest of the crowd? That's great. And, That's and great. That is great. That is great. That is that so is handwritten a handwritten letter. I learned that from a seven year old actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you know, if you want to find out more about you know some ways that we're marketing, you know, you obviously come to our, our, our real estate meetings. The next one will be posted on Meetup very shortly. Uh, go, but go to addictedtorealestate.com, the number two. Put in your email address, and we will send you a personal invitation to the next one. Yeah, I think um, I used to tell people. I, I say this kind of tongue in cheek, but. If you want to learn, see some of my foreclosure marketing, just stop making your mortgage payments, and you'll see all the marketing that I send out. <laughs> no, that's bad advice. Don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> there's, something, there's something wrong with that. I don't, I, I, I don't know. So, Tom, we're so excited that you were here today. Really, really glad you were here. I mean, we, we had some great conversation on getting mortgages. It's awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, so I think um, if you want to tune into this show, every Thursday at 3 o'clock we broadcast this. If you have real estate questions... You can email him into us at phil at addicted to real estate.com. We'll go right to Phil's inbox and he'll put them on the list here as a question to answer on the show. We have uh, great educational events. If you want to check out our educational events, go to addicted to real estate.com. That's addicted with the number two real estate.com and find out when our next meetup is. We have these awesome meetings. We did a commercial uh, lending meeting or a commercial acquisition meeting in uh, the last meeting. The next one coming up, I'm not sure what the topic is. Phil, Phil has the calendar of events there. But uh, we have some great real estate education meetings. So tune into those. Uh, Other ways that we can do business together, Larry had mentioned the – Larry, tell them a little bit more about what we're doing with the uh, real estate license. Yeah, we're we're actually paying for your real estate license. And, 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 you know, be honest with you, we we love to have real estate agents who are investors working with us. It's just awesome. So stop by. You've seen our three stores. You can stop by in Hatboro. You can stop by on uh, in Line Lexington, or you can stop by in Huntington Valley. You can see me or Phil or Jeremy, or please just give us a call. You can call me direct at 215-378-9190. Thanks for listening. Somebody, to get some-